Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another battle report. This is another fantasy battles game that I played uh, against, against the same player as last time, uh, although he brought a different army. I'm using my Oaks and Goblins again, but he brought out his cultists, an army that has, has been featured on my channel before uh, in the uh, faction focus episode about cultists. So if you want to check, check out his army, you can uh, uh, see that episode. I'll link it down below in the description. So uh, yeah, that's what we you are in store for. So an overview of the table. We rolled up um, Breakthrough and the um, Marching Columns deployment type. And the table consists of uh, quite a symmetric table really uh, so we have hills on each side and impassable on each side and then a lake a forest and a field in the middle uh, it just sort of happened uh, but that, that's the way it is sometimes so I'll go through my army it's pretty much identical to the last time the list will be down below as usual so we have a chariot out on the flank and a giant with big brother and a net a wrecking team some K goblins with a, a ma Maggot, full command, and nets. The Great Green Idol, the only model I doesn't, don't have yet, so this is borrowed from um, the, the uh, opponent. Another Wrecking Team, and next to it, with appropriate distance, though it was difficult to place the, him correctly, is a uh, common goblin witch doctor with thaumaturgy on a wolf. And he has the skull fetish. He's an adept, we should say too. Behind them are the uh, mount mounted feral Ed Bashers with full command and spear, uh, light lances, they are called, shields, and the banner of speed with an Iron Oak Warlord uh, on the warboard, who's the general, paired weapons with Shady Shankins, uh, Tuk Tex Guard, Shield and Talisman of Shielding, and a Troll Ale Flask. Uh, behind them is the uh, Shaman, Master of Shamanism, uh, Feral Orc on a Wyvern. And he has a Shield Breaker on his paired weapons, Medical Heirloom and Pan of Protection Pinchin. Some Common Orc Ed Bashers, 35 of them with uh, full command, spears and shields. And another uh, War Chariot. And uh, that should be it. Uh, I also have some Grocklings over here on his side that he scouted up there. Um, the opposing army is Cultists, and you can see here that we have a unit of Cultists, a unit of Possessed, a unit of Cultists, a unit of Possessed, and a unit of Cultists. And that's all, all there is. Nothing more. If only that were true. <coughs> so, a little bit more, more detail. Uh, these guys behind here, they are Cultists with Infiltrators and Throne Weapons. They scouted here. A bit to counter my Grotlings. I think that was a mistake of him, uh, but he was worried that if he had scouted them up in the field, they would just yes, become a stepping stone for the rest of my army, which could have been, tr been true. I should also start by saying that all of the uni units are dishonored, uh, so they have Resilience 4 and March 9, uh, Advance 3, uh, 12, 4 for the Possessed, so they are Dwarves, cultist dwarves. Um, this unit, uh, or these two possessed units, they are identical. Um, they are uh, 25 in numbers, dishonored, with red haze, spears, and full command. So they have two attacks each at strength 5, AP 2, I'm fairly sure. And then spears, so AP 3, and when you charge, AP 4. And uh, on once they hit themselves. Both of them are joined by a um, demonic symbiote, or demon symbiote, demon symbiote. Uh, the one in this unit is an adept with evocation. And he's got uh, spear of titanic might and essence of mithril, and chilling yawn. So you have less agility when you're in com contact with him. So basically, the spear unit is agility. 7 or 8, they're on elf levels, all things included. Uh, the other guy also has Shilling Yawn, 
um, he's an adept in uh, divination instead, and he has a spear, a spear with touch of greatness, and basalt infusion and shield with willow sword. So they bo both have a two up um, armor and a five up aegis, and I think four or five attacks with high strength and high AP. Uh, so they are they are quite good. Um, and this unit, cultists, the big unit, uh, they are 32 in numbers with an abyssal conduit and a musician and a thunderbearer. Joining them is a cult leader, who is a general, with master of ritual, uh, so he's got an 18 inch bubble, and something else, can't really recall what else that did, um, maybe something for magic. Yeah, something. Uh, he's a wizard master with evocation, and he's got Destiny's Call, uh, Scepter of Power, and Scurrying Whale. So, Scurrying Whale is the Vermis War more item that allows him to march 20 inches, and he's tiny, so he can move through his own units. That's cool. I love that item. And over here, we have some more cultists who are also uh, a, a conduit for the um, Abyssal Powers, whatever, Abyssal Conduit. But that's not all. He also reminded me to take a picture of his uh, demon pile that he could summon, and I proceeded to take the blurriest picture in the history of mankind. But we have here, what we have here are two units of five hellhounds and a hope harvester. They don't have any upgrades or anything like that. We have 21 lemurs with stiff upper lips, so they are cold blooded, and they have a musician and a stunner bearer. And we have five fiends. Um, with unhinged jaw, musician, and stunner bearer. So in points, um, let's see here. These the hellhounds can be summoned for one whale token. The hope officer for two. The lemurs for three, and the uh, um, cloud fiends for three. So that's how that, that math checks out. So. Uh, deployment, uh, we had marching columns, so I dropped, we, we dropped uh, three each, and then I decided to drop everything go, to go first, and earned a massive plus two to win the roll, because he had so few units on the table, uh, four in characters, um, but I still won and went first. So I marched up, marched up, as you can see, as aggressively as I could, I kept the um, Mad at in the field in case he wanted to summon the horror harvester and shoot at him. It would not have been the best of target anyway, but felt I wanted to keep him safe. Uh, spells I should men mention also. Mad at rolled up. Uh, I guess I didn't mention him in, in, in the run, run through. He wasn't in, the, in that first picture. Uh, so Mad at is a ki uh, forest goblin king on Huntsman Spider with Crown of Wizard King, uh, Basalt Infusion, and uh, sh uh, Dusk Forge Shield. And that's uh, lots. Uh, so he's fun. He got uh, occultism, so he has pentagram of pain. I took um, the hand of heaven and uh, trial of fate. I think it's called the uh, um, resilience and, and uh, strength uh, messing spell on the thaumaturgy guy, and the usual loadout on the wyvern. Um, Break the spirit, totemic summon, small swarm of insects, and uh, awaken the beast and the hereditary. Um, bring the pain. On the shaman, um, he got most of everything from evocation and two spears, um, and from divination he only took the uh, spell to. I think it, that one had a spear, and then the spell to uh, rerolls to hit. So he had two spells to make him rerolls re to hit, which is good when he has red haze on the possessed. Uh, so I moved up, and I used some some spells, and I got the only one I, that I got through that did anything was a swarm, of, swarm of insects on the possessed over here on the hill, and I killed a few. I, did, I rolled a high number of sixes, but he saved quite good, so it evened out fairly good. Uh, his turn doesn't look like much, uh, but he shuffled about a bit in his movement phase. Uh, can go back, you see the cultists in the back 
they tried to charge my grotlings, but they failed. I think I used energy to kill one or of them or something like that. Um, and that's about it. For the moment, of uh, at least. He summoned a Hope Harvester. They are popping out of the ground. Quite annoying. Um, he used magic to... Um, he first, first cast a Spear of Infinity on the Wrecking Team here in front of me. But I, I let it go and he failed the uh, wound roll, fortunately. I needed a 3 up and rolled a 2. He then cast uh, another spell to damage it, I think, and I dispelled that and he, I let through the um, uh, Haste the Hour on this unit and he did a wound on my Witch, witch Doctor, which is annoying. Uh, shooting, saw him do one wound to the Wrecking Team with the Hope Harvester. So I was, I was very fortunate that he didn't roll that 3 up with the Spear of Infinity. Um, so that's what it looks like. Uh, yeah, this is after my second turn. So I moved up Madat fairly aggress aggressively, keeping him out of the arc of the Possessed. But these two units doesn't scare him at all, so he's just going up there. Uh, my Grotlings charged into his... Um, cultists, his infiltrators, mostly because I wanted to wanted another another whale token and uh, got that through the um, scout fetish. That guy has uh, fled the field and ran behind the hill over down here. He doesn't want to take any chances. The scout fetish is too important uh, at this point in the game, and his spells are not that important too. Magic, I kill a few more cultists. I think, yeah, this is another role for. Uh, the um, processed for, for the uh, swarm of insects, so the wound roll for success. Uh, so I killed more from that unit. This combat didn't go too well. I lost two bases, killed a few of him. Whatever. Just a close up of his army because it's so beautiful. Um, so in his turn, he again shuffled about a bit. Um, you can see he moved this unit up into the face of Madat, and he, he summoned a big unit of Lemurs in my in my face, and some Hellhounds over here. Hellhounds are one of the few units that could deal with Madat, because they have, have little strike, so that's uh, one of his best bets at uh, getting to him. Um, let's see, Magic, he used a spear on this guy, did two wounds as was expected, and then the shooting caused another wound. He needed 4 up to wound with his uh, 3 hits. So the uh, that working team was dead. Um, conveniently, he let this guy live, because that would mean uh, that I couldn't charge in here. Uh, last turn I, I cast um, uh, Awaken the Beast on this unit to increase the resilience in case he wanted to charge it. It was a long shot, but uh, I wanted to be safe. That meant I could move, move them up a little bit further. Um, yeah, so this is what it looks like. And then I declare charges. So Madad goes into the cultist, the Ed Bashers go into the front, and the chariot into the flank. He didn't really see the chariot coming, he must have missed that. Um, well, that was a big help for me. Uh, these guys passed their friendship check, so they didn't have to charge through the wrecking team into the flank, and I opted not to. Uh, the giant charged the these cultists, who had by, the, by now finished off my grotlings. And the wrecking team moved through here and did a little bit of damage to the uh, possessed. But not that, that much really. Later, you will see this model is, has been replaced by a black round uh, uh, hockey puck, it looks like, but it's a uh, snuff uh, box. Um, so, sw Swedish drugs. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah, another overview. This is before my magic phase. I moved up the this guy into the forest. He is facing forward, but I couldn't place the wizard behind him appropriately like, like that. Uh, I'm hiding the wizard behind him to keep him from uh, throwing the spears at me too easily. Um, it's something at least. 
I cast Smite the Unbeliever on these guys and was lucky to reduce their uh, resilience. Reducing their strength would have been decent, they would have required sixes to wound me. Um, but reducing their, their resilience is amazing. Now they're resilience 4, which is nothing fancy. Combat, I kill a lot. And the rest uh, crumble. So I went through that like butter, uh, which was quite unfortunate for him. Um, yeah, that's about it. The giant breaks the cultists and chases them down, running off the table. He failed uh, his restrained pursuit test. Uh, to preparing this uh, battle report, I realized that was a mistake because the cultists are nowadays unstable, so they should not not have run. Um, but um, whatever. I'm not really sure what would have happened if they had just stood there, because I don't think it would have killed them all in one turn um, if you couldn't break them. So, don't know. Uh, yeah, magic. I also managed to cast up a. Uh, to timing summon in the back. I had three, di three dice left, didn't really know what to do with them and figured it w it's always useful to have a little to timing su summon. <coughs> so, um, next turn. Uh, mad at, I can say, charge into, the, into the, these cultists. He staked in that combat for the rest of the turn, g game pretty much. Again, we played it wrong, we forgot about unstable, so they didn't. Uh, they, they, they passed steadfast tests every turn, um, but they should have crumbled a little bit and maybe I w would have gotten through, the, uh, through them sooner or faster, but whatever. Um, but the poss possessed charged into my adbashers, and he retaliated against me by casting uh, Whispers of the Whale on me, so now I'm the one with uh, less resilience and less uh, discipline, if that would be, become relevant. <coughs> Combat saw me losing a whole bunch of orcs, uh, 12 of them, but I killed quite a lot of him in return, and I stick, stuck around. Uh, his summoning that uh, turn uh, saw him place a unit of fiends on the table, on the, ba uh, on the back here to handle my Giant and uh, possibly the chariots that's uh, are roaming about these regions. So in my turn, it was time to charge. Uh, this unit couldn't charge the possessed because they are in, the, in their front. But the character is in their flank, so he decided to charge. The Great Green Idol is gonna assist him. The K Goblins are charging the possessed. They need an eight uh, on Swiss Stride because I declared the uh, war cry and the. Vyvern is charging the Possessed as well, which is a long charge, I think I need about 10 or something, 10 or 11. And um, the Goblins fail, but everyone else makes it, which is not ideal for the Wyvern. <laughs> He's not too happy to be facing all of those Possessed and a de de uh, Demon Symbiote on his own, but um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, to make matters worse, the General fails his uh, Dana's Drain Test when charging and takes a wound uh, through the forest. Um, I move about a little bit with the rest of the units, the chariots and all of that. The giant comes back onto the table and moves down here to face the um, fiends. He's, he doesn't have a chance, uh, a chance against them, but whatever. Uh, the witch doctor is uh, being brave and moving up to participate in the game again. Spells, I cast. Uh, I think I started with the Break the Spirit, spirit on the Possessed. I wanted to uh, make it harder for them to kill my general. Um, and then I cast something that he dispelled. <coughs> I think it was the uh, Thaumaturgy Resilience um, nerfing spell. And then I cast Break. Uh, bring the pain on um, these possessed. I was debating on doing that or Awaken the Beast on the general to uh, increase his resilience to really make sure he would, wouldn't be killed. 
that I opted for. <laughs> Actually, I rolled a die to d determine which spell I was going to cast because I couldn't decide. And it uh, gave me Bring the Pain. Um, which was good in the end. So, this combat... I challenged, and he declined. Uh, because he wanted to swing at me with his full, full unit. And I... Um, the Vyvern struck first, so he directed um, his Stinger attack on the uh, Demon Symbiote, and I think he hit thanks to the Bring the Pain, and then he wounded, and he failed the Aegis uh, save, and I did two wounds to him, so I rolled a 1 on the D3, and then the Shaman uh, took his three attacks, I think he directed one or two at the Demon Symbiote, killed him, and uh, in total he killed two other guys uh, with the stomp included. So I think it, I won the combat, but he stuck around, um, or his, his supernal didn't kill anymore I think, uh, but I did kill his Demon Symbiote. Uh, he swung back and did uh, uh, two wounds to me. Um, I, th I saved fairly well, I think I did. He did four wounds in total, and I saved two of them, five up. Um, the combat against the possessed over here went well, they just shattered. I went into a challenge again with his demon symbiote with the general, and uh, um, he, he fluffed his attacks, he needed five state and didn't do much. Uh, and I killed him in return, so that was nice. So this is his turn now, he's charging the fiends into the giant. And uh, oh, I my uh, totemic summon charged the flank of this unit. I think he, he drew combat in the first turn. <clears throat> when he arrived he used a breath weapon to kill a few of these um, possessed, so he didn't have that left. And in his turn, in, in the combat he, he reformed to face him. Um, and he charged the Hellhounds into the flank of the Wyvern. So that's what that looks like. And he summoned another unit of Hellhounds back here. Um, yes. Then I took the world's blurriest picture of the giant. This is almost artistic in some way. Um, but it signifies that the giant was obliter obliterated by the fiends. They used, used their unhinging jaws to eat him up. Uh, Madat kept punching away at these cultists, and uh, the hounds didn't do anything, but uh, the possessed finish of the wyvern. In this combat above with the uh, totemic summon, he wins, and I run to over here, and then in my turn I fail to rally and I run through the fiends and die. Uh, the chariot here is right on the edge of the hill, so he's looking. You he can see these guys. So in my turn, I charge the cave goblins in and the chariot in. Uh, so the cave goblins into the hellhounds and the chariot into the, into the flank. The hellhounds overran. Uh, the wyvern didn't make it into the goblins. Uh, yeah, yes, you can see here the chariots. The great green idol, idol is charging the uh, hope harvester, and the orcs are trying a long charge on the um, cultists, uh, which proved to be a mistake, because uh, if you are doing better than, than we are, uh, you might have remembered the scenario, which is breakthrough, so I should focus on actually getting some unit into his deployment zone, not try uh, uh, long charges that fail. Uh, in this combat I lower his strength, so he's gonna have trouble wounding me. And the chariot does quite well. Uh, I think I don't think he obliterates the unit, but it, yeah, he, he kills a few, a fair bunch. Um, and the great idol does nothing. I, I tried to crush attack and missed, and he did nothing in return. Um, the general has joined back with the unit, um, not to be killed by any spears or things like that. Or touch of the reaper, scary stuff like that. He charges the fiends into the flank. The general has abandoned 
abandoned ship and hid here behind the, uh, the hill. And this unit uh, marches up to block my uh, path forward, which effectively blocks me from entering, entering his uh, the province zone, uh, because I'm foolish enough to take the bait and charge him instead of reforming and marching up into the zone. Uh, so in my last turn I charge <coughs> Madat and the orcs into here, and the general charges the possessed and kills them. Uh, one left here, and then in, in his last turn, uh, he uh, charge the fiends, kill the chariot, and overrun into goblins. And this is how it looks in the at the end of the game. I didn't manage to kill this unit. Um, I did manage to kill the possessed, but both the hellhounds are alive and the fiends are alive, and this unit is still alive. And these two just kept having a pillow fight. I missed my crush attack. He did nothing to me, so they were both fine. <laughs> so that's the end of the game. Um, we tallied the points, and or actually we didn't because I was in a hurry, so I had to uh, get out of there. Uh, so we couldn't tally the points, but I've done it afterwards, um, and I won 13-7. Uh, um, I really didn't push my advantage. I think I could have gotten a lot more points if I remembered the scenario and um, charged better in this turn when uh, I charged the uh, the uh, Great Green Idol. This turn I think I could have done a lot better stuff with them. I should probably have charged the orcs into the cultists here to overrun and um, or maybe they couldn't overrun. They, they are in the flanks so they would just ended up somewhere here, but that would have been decent. Or just not chart with them and march forward. Um, and probably just taking it easy. The goblins definitely should charge and the chariot probably as well, but then I should have just moved the idol back here and the, the boars up a bit. I joined the, the um, warlord to them. A bit of a problem though, I can't really do that. I should have. Uh, because the order of how you move things, so it was a bit of a sticky situation. Um, but uh, I, I, this, there is a better, better solution here somewhere, I know that. But um, it was a fun game. I, the first time I played against the cultists, I really want, wanted to, because I think it's a really unique and cool book. And it was interesting to play against. They are fairly easy to box in, but then their demons start popping up, and if you're not careful, they can really really mess things up for you. Uh, I was fortunate that I could really counter his uh, Lemurs, but they could have uh, could have blocked me uh, for quite a long time. And if he had seen the chariot, he could have placed them a little bit uh, differently and then had a bigger advantage. So maybe I wouldn't have gone through, gone through them in a, tur in a single turn. So yeah, it was a fun game. Um, pretty close in the end and um, really really interesting um, I hope to play cultists again sometime uh, though next time we've talked about uh, trying out the advanced Maddox rules so we'll see how that goes uh, moving through the diff different supplements uh, to spice up the game and try, try what's out there so that's it for now thank you for listening and I'll see you on the next one cheers